Here we go, guys. Another episode of the Altitude and Trails podcast. We are here with Rob for the Eastern Grand People Mountain Man. Rob. Hi, Rob. How are you? I'm good. Thanks, Marco. So, you look uh, real now. It's always <laughs> a pleasure when you talk with friends like this, just that you knew from Instagram, chatting and stuff. And now you all guys coming alive with this podcast. And it's really, really nice. Okay, you look good. So, what are you doing? Where are you? Um, I'm in Scotland right now, actually. Um, yeah, so kind of stuck here thanks to Corona. <laughs> okay, so so uh, Rob is a student, and he's studying. Um, I study psychology and business. Well, pretty intense, pretty intense. Okay, the reason why Rob is here is because I asked him to talk a little bit about reindeer, caribou, and Rob has a nice experience that he he got from Greenland, and he was working there for yeah, a little period there as a cook. Well, how, how long you stay in Greenland? Three summers. I was I was there as a hunting guide, as a cook, and uh, some other things as well. Lots wow. of lots of wildlife. Lots of wildlife. Oh, I'm happy to hear <laughs> that. Okay, so uh, caribou reindeer. What what you should say, reindeer or caribou? So um, you've got the family of reindeer or caribou. Yeah. All the reindeer are on the Eurasian continent, and then the caribou. For some some reason, that's the name for reindeer in the North American continent. Okay, so and Greenland, since Greenland is North America, they have caribou. Okay, more more specifically, um, Greenlandic barren ground caribou. Wow, a nice one, right? They are beautiful. They are beautiful. They are so, uh, you have hunted uh, hunted them, right? Yeah, that's right. Because, um, because I see something there <laughs> on the left side. Yeah. <laughs> is your last yeah. is your last fellow that that one? Was that is is your last on that one? Yeah, that's ah, that's right. Nice, nice. Okay, so you hunted them. You were saying Greenland, and um, how is the, the hunting? Before we get into into the recipes, the meat treatment, uh, how you feel about that? Let's t- just tell us a little bit about the hunt that you experienced there in Greenland. How it is? So hunting caribou in in Greenland is a little different than you'd experience in let's say uh, let's say Europe because mm-hmm. uh, the wilderness areas are huge. You could, you could follow them for hundreds and hundreds of kilometers. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, what we did was we hunted them right next to the ice cap. Um, they were on their migration to their, uh, their native breeding grounds. Oh. They, were, they were migrating caribou everywhere, but not in such quantities that you see in, let's say, Canada. Um, these ones were mostly um, singular bulls that you see, and they were very elusive. You, you, so, you would, well, for hunting them, you need equal parts of uh, luck, adaptability, and fitness, really. Okay, what about the eyesight of the caribou? They can, they can spook you from kind of far, right? That's, that's true, yeah. yeah. Um, they've got good eyesight, but they're no um goats <laughs> they're no goats mostly the the uh, sense of smell i'd reckon okay um okay so you work as a cook and uh when you started you uh you didn't know anything about the native recipes of uh, stuff like that right no 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 at least not to greenland um but you got in contact with some natives and you, you, you learned something from them, you, you told me previously. Yeah, that's true. Um, the Greenlandic native culture is kind of suppressed these days, but uh, you, you still have some uh, native, recipe, native recipes or ways to cook that are still alive. Okay. Um, most importantly, I'd say the meat drying processes 
um, in the summer. Um, that was amazing. And we, we ourselves, we got a lot of um, caribou meat. We were um, running the trophy hunting operations there as well. So, uh, yeah. So you so guided, was... you guided, you were a cook, and uh, wow, that that was a really deep and deep in experience that you got in in Greenland. Okay, let's let's dive it a little bit more into the cooking uh, topic right now. So, w what is the um, the best of the caribou meat? What what is the things you like about caribou meat compared to the other meats? Well, it's a very sweet meat. Oh, it's a sweet um, meat. Unlike most of the um, game meats, it isn't that gamey at all, really. It's really sweet and uh, quite mild. Um, really lean meat, not much fat in it. Okay. And the fat that you do get on the, on the back of the animal, well, very few people like to eat the, the fat of deers, reindeer. Okay. So you're talking yeah. about the people that you got in, in, in the restaurant, I mean, where you were working, right? Hotel, I don't know what it was. So the Greenlandic people, some of them do actually eat the fat of the animal. Okay. Um, as you know, as a hunter, I don't think many European hunters actually eat the meat, uh, eat, eat the fat of, of the deer that we hunt, would you say? We, we usually don't. No. But the Greenlandic Inuit sometimes, they, they carve some of the fat from the back of the animal just under the skin yeah and I've, I've seen people take that and, and put it into coffee like this <laughs> like this like rare yeah wow yeah yeah like just drop it in that um wow. I, i've heard about i don't know bulletproof coffee like in, in europe there's a there's a new thing that you put uh you put um butter into your coffee mm -hmm. i don't know i never do more energy. yeah some they do you've yeah. heard of this yeah um, but apparently, Greenlandic people have done this for ages wow. with the, with the reindeer meat, uh, red, red deer. So, pack. so you were cooking for what type of people? Um, so, depending on the time of my my employment there, I was I was cooking for uh, hunters in the hunting camp. Then I was working for a fine dining restaurant. Okay, uh, and there we had like some. Private planes flying over Greenland. Oh, we, nice. We were, so, we were cooking to billionaires and all sorts of okay. people. Okay, nice. So let, 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 me, let me ask you this thing, it's a very curiosity. So most of the time you, I, I suggest like, um, like um, you, let's just simulate a situation where you have like some people there and you have to to cook some meat most of the time was caribou or just like other type of meat um it depended on the menu really but we we mostly cooked um muscox and caribou up north and then down south we had meats like um locally farmed sheep since it was a bit warmer down okay. south of Greenland, okay. and well, whale. Wow, wow. Okay, so let's just stay with the caribou. So, okay, you have to cook some kind of meat. At that day, you have caribou. How you prepare? Most of the time, how did you pre pre prepare the caribou meat? So we had fillets. We had the tenderloin, the neck meat. Um, obviously, you have the front shoulder. Mm -hmm. um, there's very little to a caribou or a reindeer that you cannot eat. And since you're so far up north, there are absolutely no um, infestations that, that would really threaten your health. You might have some uh, bot flies potentially down south. Yeah. They, were, they were brought by the um, okay. Europeans that imported um, domesticated reindeer from Norway. But, uh, yeah, so that, that would really risk your health. It's really a healthy meat, right? Absolutely. And uh, a lot of the time we just ate it raw. 
Um, in the hunting camp, we often made um, tartar. Tartar caribou. <laughs> wow. Yeah, as a starter. Yeah. Um, uh, mind you, we were under very primitive premises there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what, what is the, the one of the favorite dishes that you made with a caribou that people say, oh my God, I, I can't stand, this is so good. What, what is what the most su successful dish that you ever made with caribou? So, um, I'd say some of the best um, caribou meat we ate was 21-day um, uh, no, matured, uh, dry-aged um, caribou filet. That was amazing. Nice. And uh, we had a, yeah, go ahead. No, we, we had a dry ager in, in the restaurant we worked in, and, and that was beautiful. It was so succulent. Wow. It so, sounds mm. amazing, the type of meat. So, and in terms of preparation, something like it needs a little bit more time that you that you marinate or something like that. I mean, I don't know what kind of style it's... it's you. you you followed when you were working there? So in the restaurant, we cooked mostly um, Europeanized, so West, Westernized um, mm. recipes. And we had all the fancy, fancy sous vide and uh, anything you could come up with, really. We had, we had it all. We could have done what would you expect in a, in a European restaurant. But uh, yeah, we made pulled caribou quite a lot of time <laughs> okay. just to put on just to put on sourdough bread uh, but uh, if, if you really wanted to eat like the Greenlandic people you could just chop chop the meat into cubes and put it into a soup yeah uh, the, the Greenlandic modern Greenlanders usually like to eat their meat either close to raw or uh, fully 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 cooked well done yeah okay um, and yeah, you, you had all sorts of, um, soups that the locals like, uh, they were quite simple food, um, but, uh, taking this back to some Finnish recipes, my, my favorite, my absolute favorite is, um, sauteed reindeer and it's an old, old recipe, um, which you, which you make from, a frozen piece of reindeer. Okay. And, it, and the recipe comes from the old old ages when you you had a frozen frozen reindeer and you just well, you, you know how difficult it is to butcher a frozen animal and you just carve some of the meat from the frozen lump into like these small thin chips essentially mm -hmm. and you just throw them into a hot pan, fry them fast in butter or originally reindeer fat. Wow, now start to be. And um, you pair it with potato, mashed potato, some some lingon, uh, lingonberry uh, jam. Beautiful. Wow, this is, sounds amazing. Uh, how many times you you got that thing made when you were in Greenland? Um, I made that a lot, really. <laughs> I can I can <laughs> see that people will love that. Yeah. So that was mostly in the hunting camp. In hunting camp, yeah, because it's something you can organize, make you can prepare when you're in the field, right? Yeah, it's easy. It's easy, and it works every time. And it works every time. So, okay, then when did you start to just get interested a little bit to more to the local recipes? Um, it must have been. I don't know. Actually, I think I've always always been interested in, in foreign cuisines. Um, I lived in Italy once in, uh, that was in my early teens. Okay. I was really, really, really keen to, to see how like people in Tuscany cook. Yeah. And I think that's where the interest, uh, was born really. That's, that's yeah. a really nice thing because actually you, you, uh, saying the same things that Paolo said that in cooking, it's, it's always a nice uh, attitude to be a little bit eclectic, you know, and uh, speaking up a little bit the different cultures in 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 terms of mm -hmm. how they cook the the meat. So, but 
I want to know actually uh, when you started to to learn about the local recipes, what did you think about that? It was something that was um, really different from our Western type of cooking, or was a little bit more a uh, cooking style that you can have when you are in the field? So um, mostly in in Greenland, um, cooking was very, very primitive, very basic. There wasn't any spice in the food if we're talking about the, the original Green, Greenlandic cooking. So you e either you were forced to eat the meat raw or uh, dried. Um, of course, that, this was incredibly healthy since you didn't really have any pathologies there. Yeah. But uh, uh, it's, it's not really that exciting. Over time, uh, and especially not for the faint-hearted Westerners. <laughs> yes, we're, we're not that used, probably. No, no, but uh, it is not uncommon in the in the northern Europe to, yeah. to smoke reindeer. Yeah, it's uh, it's a real delicacy there, and uh, if you think about the the, the field field specific um, cooking methods, something that you can have on the go. Uh, smoked meat is excellent. You can carry it for for days, and it won't really go bad. Yeah. Um, so that's what we also made in in, in Greenland. Um, smoked that, smoked meat. So that actually is a piece of smoked reindeer that actually you you can put in your backpack and just cut it when you want, and then you bring with you. Essentially, yeah. And since the weather is quite mild up there. Uh, it's, it's not like walking in, in the Italian sunshine. No. With the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it preserved the meat really in a different way. <laughs> that, that, that's true. And um, I and what kind of um, recipes you discover with the native, with the locals that you, you, you get crazy about? Um, so since... Since the um, Greenlandic cuisine is quite mild and you, you didn't have that many exciting recipes there, there's, there's a new movement going on there oh. about the, the, the revival of, of the, the cooking cuisine. Uh, they, they, they've got amazing superfoods living uh, and growing wild in their nature and now they're trying to learn to use all of those resources properly. Mm, interesting. They, they, have, they have growing tourism industry and everything there, so why not? Why not really? You've got berries, you've got mushrooms growing, well, some of them at least. You've got some some wild wild uh, greens growing that you can use and utilize for garnish. Uh, they have it all there. Um, so in terms of Western fine dining, that that's a uh, you could you could make wine. You could make all sorts of beautiful stuff there. Yeah, that's that's interesting. So you're saying that actually they are trying to develop a little bit this kind of style where where the ingredients come from the wild. Actually, that's it. Wow, that's that's yeah. a really 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 nice. That make me really feel like I want to take a plane and get there, get there and discover all these things. Uh, what type of uh, animals most of the time are cooked like it's just like there is a uh, the um, a favorite ones like most of the time is young ones or females or there's no difference um it did depend a lot obviously the older animals were usually turned into mincemeat or something um younger animals for restaurant use they were preferred uh, it was obviously more succulent, but I don't think in my time there I, I noticed a huge difference. Some obviously older bulls were a little bit more chewy, but yeah. nowhere near to how chewy they would get. Okay, so there is uh, no substantial difference between the, those those categories of animals. I, I wouldn't argue so. Um, I had some really old bulls, and they well, if they're in the middle of the rut. You can, if you can smell them, you won't, you won't enjoy them. But obviously, a lot of the time, 
none of none of the meat we had ever went to waste. We we had um, play dogs. And they ate everything oh, yeah. we would have. True, eat. true. Yes, well, there's a lot of dogs apparently there. Yeah. So, so, so the dogs dogs ate everything that otherwise could not be used. And uh, the native, they, I mean, the locals, they do something um, special with the bones because I don't think there will be a waste from, from a caribou. So you could use them for the soups. Yeah. Um, we, we made a lot of broth from the bones. Um, they're not, <laughs> there isn't much marrow bone in, in a, in a caribou. So, well, so some of the bigger caribou, you, you might use the thigh bone, you might find something there. Um, but it's not like moose where you have this big bones, big sausage of, <laughs> yeah, big sausage bones, of, yeah. of marrow bone. Um, yeah. But yeah, we made we made broth. That was amazing. Interesting. Um, and the offals, I think one of the, my favorite parts of, of caribou or any animal really is the heart. The heart. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay. Let me let me know a little bit more about that. Well, how do you prepare the heart? Well, it's an amazingly versatile meat. You just cut it to pieces. Mm-hmm. You remove you remove all the all the uh, unnecessary tubing and, and whatever. You just cut it into pieces, put it on the hot pan with, I don't know, oil butter, some fat, give it a couple of seconds in there, maybe half a minute. It's on a really high heat. And then you just put some pepper salt, ready. Wow. Wow. It's, it really, really sounds yummy and tasty. What, what about the liver? The liver of the caribou? <laughs> <laughs> there was a time when we actually took a bet with my friend. Yeah. <laughs> uh, upon killing the animal, we were supposed to try it raw. That was an old, old uh, Inuit way of doing it. So when when you kill the animal, you eat the eat the liver. But uh, yeah, you you can definitely eat. I mean, we mostly cooked it. <laughs> we always cooked it. <laughs> So the, but you, it's, you tried rare, rare liver. Yeah, we, we tried raw liver as well, yeah, but yeah. that was quite horrible. <laughs> that was really intense taste, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, if, you, if you fry it in butter, it will be awesome. Yeah, yeah, amazing, amazing. So mm-hmm. do they um, use the intestine? Well, not really. There's so much meat about the they they wouldn't we we actually cooked the intestine a couple of times mm. uh we we just upon killing the animal we just uh, took the intestine g- gave it a little rinse in the in the mountain creek and then then put it in the plastic bags with some water took it to to the hunting camp boiled it for a couple of hours and then then just cut it into pieces and made a stir fry <laughs> wow oh and it, it was actually pretty good with spices very like obviously, dried doesn't really have a strong flavor, so it's all about the spices there. Okay, the spices I and mean, actually it's herbs that you're gonna find around, right? Yeah, yeah, and and uh, we made some Asian fruit from that as well. That's wow. pretty good. Wow, wow, it's it's just unbelievable. I just start to remember a little bit. I. The only experience that I had was in Lapland when I, I bought just a small piece of reindeer. And then the guy said, hey, you're just like, you know, you can just cut it and put it in a coffee. And then I don't know if I really understood. It was like put it in the coffee. But now you you tell you told me just you can put a fat in, in the coffee. So why not the meat? So I probably is, is, is the same typology of use. And it was actually really, really sweet, really sweet and uh, easy to cut, really tender, lean, not even not one trace of fat. Mm. It was really beautiful, beautiful. And um, so just a question. And I remember even when I was in Mongolia, actually, they, they use a lot the blood when they kill the animal, actually. But this probably... On a on a wild animal is a little bit more difficult, but um, when they have like a breeding uh, caribou reindeers, actually they use a lot of the blood. You know, they cook the blood actually, 
and uh, they put on a yeah. big pan and they 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 um they they use that actually because I, it's true that it's another another source of proteins and uh yeah. i i i mean i suppose they do something like that um so not in greenland but i'm sure uh, in the in the northern lapland in, in lapland northern northern europe people surely yeah people yeah. surely do that so how they um, the, the the native call the caribou there's a, as of course there's a their name how they call it what's that the native, the native? How, the, how they call the reindeer caribou they call it uh, tutu tutu wow yeah <laughs> <laughs> so they're allowed to i mean the locals they are allowed to hunt the reindeer in specific seasons or just all uh, all around the year so you've got um the season starts in uh, the end of august and um yeah it continues to uh the end of i think october november okay. october and um then you've got a short season in the spring mm -hmm. i think it's uh one month from uh march to april okay the winter hunt yeah well, it's a that's, it's that's, long that's, period that's when it's that's when it's cold as as it gets wow hell will freeze <laughs> with a temperature that goes what negative what 20 negative 40 <gasps> negative 40 maybe more yeah, yeah. i understand the fat in the coffee <laughs> yeah Really? You need the extra calories. Oh my god! Extra so calories, welcome. We're, we're almost at the end at the end of the podcast. And uh, do we have some recipes that we didn't mention? Let's see. Um, well, obviously, you can eat more of the offals. We ate kidneys. We even tried the balls. The best, however, aside from the from the heart, is the tongue. The tongue of the caribou. Tongue is phenomenal. Wow. So how do you prepare? Okay, let's listen to these guys. The, how do you prepare the tongue of the caribou? That's interesting. We we first boil it for an hour, then we cut it into thin thin slices and then we fry it in butter. Wow. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna take a beef uh, uh, tongue. I'm gonna do the same. Oh it's my super God. fatty. It's super fatty. Um and what so about it, the taste? Gets almost it's it's um almost like pork. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, really and interesting. Um, I even made tacos out of it with my Mexican friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the tongue recipe. It's just unbelievable, unbelievable. What what I, what what I discovered? Uh, so, okay, tongue. Is this something else? Let's see. Um, let's let's make all the viewers. Hungry. The obvious tenderloin, tenderloin is as smooth as butter. Oh yeah, I can it's imagine. Beautiful. So you can, you can cut it with a butter knife. Wow, uh, that's amazing. Um, yeah, um, something that locals love, like they there is their best piece, best recipe. That's difficult. Um, I think they just really, really like their um, fillets. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not that different from from all other humans, anyway. Yeah. That's that's that when you see that you know going back to the wild. Actually, it goes you know primal, and that's the best thing. All the flavors, yeah. all the you know the the really. Um, what, what I what I thought after all the all this podcast is just like we really the real uh taste of the meat you know the real mm. one actually it's you got it while cooking the meat not in that fancy way no no and with with caribou and reindeer i think the right way to cook it is to keep it simple yeah. you don't want to cover it in all, all the marinades. Obviously, if that's all you get, like in Greenland, if that's all the meat you get, you don't really get any beef because you're in in the shelter of the Arctic Sea and you don't really get shipments, you don't really get flights there, then 
feel free. Put some mar- marinade, put some barbecue sauce on it if you must. But uh, I, I think I'll, I'll keep it simple. I'll yeah, it simple. there's a good message actually. Guys, keep it simple. Any meat that you have from the wild, keep it simple because it's awesome, it's tasty, it's, uh, it's a clean meat, it's healthy. So that's a good message. Thanks, Rob. I really enjoy this podcast with you that I discovered so many things. Now I really feel like I want to put some some of my feet in the future and in Greenland or just the north. Or oh, who knows, I'm going to visit you. So, Let's do it, man. Yeah. Let's do it. So uh, now, because I was looking into that boy... So let, let me see that guy there, this thing on your couch. I, I'm really curious. So let's wow, see. Wow, 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 wow. It's still waiting for the approval of the landlord to get it on the wall, but <laughs> it's still on the wall. <laughs> looks, it looks really nice. It looks, who, who did the, the process? Yeah, yeah, this is, a... It's made by Trophy Art in uh, Denmark, actually. Oh. He did a good job, actually. Really nice. I, I see the velvet. It's it's perfect. Yeah, I wanted to keep it natural. Some oh, yeah. people don't want the the the, the antlers in, in velvet, but I, I think that was the only way. I I don't understand that thing. I don't I don't really understand. I mean, it's a, I I have to talk with. I don't know. We're gonna add a little bit out of the topic today, guys. But that's a really nice thing that he just mentioned, Rob. It's just people don't like velvet, but why? We have European that really can stand velvet for example i have the opportunity to 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 hunt a uh, roe deer in in winter and sometimes i mean i got a nice one and it was in velvet and i just i i bring to the taxidermist because i like it it's just like showing a different cycle of the antlers and the antlers in velvet they are so beautiful yeah beautiful That's true. And I don't understand why we are against that. Or sometimes we say like, oh, that's not good. It's not a good moment. Because we care so much about, you know, the trophy. But that actually is a trophy. In Valley, it's, it's a beautiful trophy. Yeah, Showing. it's a specimen. Yeah, that's, it gives, you know, it's just, you can understand, you know, more about biology of that animal when it's standing on the wall like that, right? Yeah. I mean, this is not the biggest caribou you come by, not by any standard, but I just, I, I killed the animal. I wanted um, the truthful me- memory to bring back to Europe as well. Yeah. yeah. And to be honest, not many people have seen these fellas. That's true. Um, That's true. That's true, actually. Yeah. So it, it, it brings a good memory. But I, I, I suppose you got a, uh, a nice, some nice meals even from the meat for that guy. Oh, so, plenty. <laughs> <laughs> so how much how much meat you can from a, a guy like that? How much meat, for example, yeah. more or less, you got from from uh, that? The animal specimen. itself would weigh somewhere around 150 kilos, I'd say. Um, I think uh, 50 kilos of it will be bones, and there'll be a little bit of a, the, the stomach as well. But I think you can easily get like 70 kilos of meat. That's a lot from, from the from the bugger. 70 but they'll be like, they'll be using all of it. Uh, funny fact, um, the caribou and reindeer, they have the biggest answer to body ratio out of any ungulates. Um, so the antlers weigh a lot. They yeah, weigh a lot. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I brought tons of meat home um, from, well, Greenland. Then... Uh, the rest of it, I tried shipping back to Europe. Nice, uh, nice, nice, amazing. Okay, Rob, that was just unbelievably interesting today. So it was a good special about caribou. Thank you so much. And uh, yes, I really enjoy it. I hope you're gonna enjoy even our our followers. And uh, keep going. And then uh, good luck for your studying. And I hope you, one day we're gonna we're gonna meet in real. For real and for some good. good adventures. Thank you. Thank you. Thank bye. everybody. Bye 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 bye. Bye mate.